Hi friends, uh, welcome to the second video in the series how to make your own COVID tracker. In this video, we are going to design the website using Bootstrap. If you don't know Bootstrap, don't worry. We'll get to know in this video itself. Okay. So this is where we stopped last time. And um, now to begin today, first I would like to show you the COVID tracker that we made. So this is the tracker that we made. It has all the details regarding the cases, active, recovered, confirmed, a worldwide data, and a few questionnaires. Then when you head to the India section, you can have your own country. Uh, here you can get more information regarding tests conducted, a few graphs, and uh, your, your map representation, and a state-wise details about the cases. In I've also included a world section where you can get uh, details related to the world statistics and uh, con country wise distribution of the confirmed cases and a small contribute page just to help people who would like to donate. Okay, so let us begin. First of all, uh, I would like you to spend some time on the Bluetooth resources learning bootstrap. It will take around 20 to 30 minutes approximately. Uh, pardon, it, go to W3 schools, bootstrap. Here you can see there are a lot of components of, the, of bootstrap, uh, Jumbotron for example. Uh, here you can see those codes and as well as what that particular component means. So in this, you can get to know what Bootstrap actually is and get yourself started. Now in this, today's video, we will be using badges, buttons, and uh, alerts. Okay, so this is a very classified website and you can also go to their documentation page, which we will be referring now. So here, you have this introduction. You can go to components. You can have all those different components and make use of this. So they have the code provided over here. Okay, so let's get started. In the home section, uh, we didn't mention uh, the head part, so we'll do it. Head title and we'll provide a title, COVID tracker. Okay, now in the body section, what we'll do is, we'll have this, uh, this thing also we need to include in the head section, the link to use the bootstrap. So we, did, we need not make a separate file for this. And a few more files using JavaScript. We would be using that later, but it's good to mention them. Okay, so here we are. I hope we have included all the files. Yeah, okay. So now what uh, we are going to do today is we are going to have this particular layout in our website. That is this section. So I will show you how you can make this part and the rest of the thing you can figure it out. Okay. So these are basically cards in bootstrap. These are buttons as you know, and these are the bootstrap icons. So we'll go to the bootstrap page and in the component section, we have the card section. You, here you can see they have an example followed by a code. So we'll copy paste this code. First of all, we'll tell this uh, HTML that we need a container. Don't worry if you don't know. If you spend some time on that website, W3 schools, you get to know. This is basically we need a container and everything inside the container should be center aligned. 
then we'll define the test container, whatever we are going to include after this. It should all be in the row format. Now we'll copy paste our card section over here. So it says that, okay, before this, I need to include one more thing. That is, I need to define the column width. Okay, so basically this bootstrap, what oh, this web page, what it has is, it has 12 sections. So you can make up a, at the most 12 sections in a web page. So this call SM3, what does it mean? Uh, if there are 12 sections, if you define call SM3, it is one fourth of the total area that you are going to have. So in our website, what we can see, we have four total cards. So call SM3 defines that you, you this one particular card is of the area three out of the total 12 area. It will be occupying three columns. Similarly for the rest of them. So if you define call SM6, it would be like you are taking half of the area out of the total area. So uh, I would strongly suggest go to that website in order to know more about all these things. And when I started from scratch and I spent nearly 20 to 30 minutes on the website and I was really fascinated by how it works. So we have included this card. We don't need an image in the card. Secondly, we have a card title. We'll write it as confirmed cases. We don't need any section to write something in the card, nor we need any link. Okay, cool. So what we need is now we need, we have the head section. Now we need a button, sorry, an icon and then a button. So I would go to this bootstrap page that they have icons. So I'll go to the icons page. Now you can search for heart or any of the icons that you want, you would like to add to your website. So this particular, I'll take, you just need to copy paste this. Okay, now one EM, this is the height and width of the icon. So you can try it out whatever uh, by putting in the numbers over here and see what size they actually represent on the website. So we'll take it as four for now. Now we have this uh, head section icon, now we need a button. So we can go here, we can go to the button section. You can see here. So for for confirmed cases, I have keep, kept it as blue, indicating that it is some kind of information. Active cases, yellow, recovered, or a green signal, and that's at obviously a red signal. So you can put that way. There are many examples over here. So I'm taking the first button, which represents blue. Just copy paste. So this is, about writing something in this. So what we actually want our button to represent is the data and it should be the confirmed cases. So we already created the last, uh, in our last video about the data that we had taken from the JSON file. So I'm just going to copy paste this part. Now we have this one section ready out of the four sections that we are going to have in this container row. So now you need to again copy paste this thing from call SM3, the end of the div section, and continue in this particular container row section itself. So I'll do this three times. Okay. Yeah. So first is confirmed cases, the second will be active, third will be Recovered and the fourth I'm going to include is this. Fine. So we can change the this uh, variables, the cases, this active. This will be okay, recovered. And the fourth one will be this. Fine. System. So we'll remove this part. We no longer need this. 
go into the command prompt, control C, running the file. Okay, so let's check it out. We have this over here. So now what we need is we need uh, some kind of uh, heading on the website and then some footer section, all those things. So you can go to the bootstrap page and actually discover what all things that you can include. You go to the navbar section and you find out, okay, this is the thing that I want to include in my web page. Then you have the code over here. You can make use of that. You can make changes to the code and try to figure it out how it works and those things. So what we have here is, so basically this button should be on the next line. You can add a break in our web page. Okay, so it's after this, we can have this break. Okay, and the body, I'm not, uh, I should add one header section maybe. Code track. Okay. So uh, the next thing that we are going to do is this. Uh, we need to indicate uh, that what are the new cases that have arrived. So for that purpose, we can go to um, their batch section. Uh, we can have uh, this particular thing. So we just need this part. Sorry, not H1 also, we need just the bad section. We'll copy paste this part here. We'll add some space. And uh, now what we need to include is, we need to include the case, and the, sorry, data, and then today cases. If you have a look at the dictionary that we created from the JSON file over here, we can have a look that uh, today cases is one of the key which describes the total new cases that have arrived. Similarly, today deaths, and uh, I guess yeah, these two data are available. We'll, in, we'll also write a plus just to indicate something that it is an addition to the previous data, and uh, we also have the deaths. So we we'll add this to the death section also. So. We have data and today that's and a plus. So now we'll rerun this program. Okay, so we can go to the website now. Okay, so we can say, oh, sorry, I put it in the recovered cases, pardon. So this is how you can create your own COVID tracker. So I'm not going to teach you how you can create this entire website, but I hope you got an idea about this. Now for the analytics section over here, can include high charts. You can go to their website. It is, it, it is also classified in terms of uh, data about all the charts that they have and uh, they also have codes so you can go to the demo section high charts demo you can select any of the charts over here and uh, edit in js fiddle and here basically you can make changes and just look how it works when you hit the run section you can see this particular chart coming up it is very interactive chart so it actually brings more information to your web page. Uh, if I remove the CSS section completely, yeah, here you can look, it doesn't infect our chart. So similarly, you can remove sections, you can play with the data over here. And you, I have explained to you how you can take data from your Flask application and put it to your HTML file. Now you need to play that, play with the data in your HTML file itself. You are facing any issues, you can go to the website, you'll have all the information with you. So just get started with it. The rest of the things will follow you. And in order to include maps, 
you can you make use of high maps oh sorry high maps it is also a part of high charts itself so here you have all the maps when you go through them you have uh, the similar kind of structure in the js fiddle you can play with the data and play with the code and include those code in your html file so this particular code will go to your head section this thing will follow up before the body ends that is a script and css uh, i don't think you need to include css in your website so it's okay so this is all about how you can make your own covid tracker now the last thing that remains is the deployment part now for the deployment part uh, i'm not going to make a video on the deployment part because i believe there are a lot of videos already present and you can follow them it will help you to deploy your website on heroku servers also i will be adding links to the description for the covid tracker that we have made secondly one of the blog posts that i have come across on medium which helped me to actually deploy my website so i would add that particular link also in the description also there will be a link to the source code of the project that we have created hope this helps uh, thank you for watching if you end up liking this video please like share comment subscribe